organizers do for labs. And that can also give you a lot of issues because if a server, you know, having a server nearby that you're connected to and whatnot, et cetera, server issues are more likely to happen if you've got mm -hmm. a physical server than just a cloud server. Um, but yeah, just some interesting little tidbits from TeamSpeak. Right now though, Xbox One being chucked out early, and of course we've got the Dust 2 changes already implemented, so no one to be peeking out of a hair except for Short. That's where Mantu spouts out quite a few, and he just wants to back off. Yeah, that Xbox smoke actually prevents them from tracking down the kill in middle either. Alexi trying to get in position. Montu nestled in at Goose. And they're being quick about this, loud and proud, as Sprouts do scale up in towards this A site. They have to clear Montu. Oh, Mantu finds the first instantly. Raza is down and out. Alexi as well. Long range taps coming in. Why not? Let's all get firing off. And Farvin's the one to do the same. Flash will be the next guy. Oh. But Farvin's not stopping yet. Speedy. Has been taken out. Farvin, the only one to get frags, but he oh. might just get them all. Another found. Farvin setting up for the ace. Bomb is being planted. Fakes it out initially. Wants to get aggressive, but Valde knows. Valde misses a shot. And Valde's low. Oh. He has to be careful. He can be one shot down to the head. Farvin's looking to do just that. Takes out. Farvin, the trump's given over. Once he's oh. taking the duel and he's got the ace. What a way to start it, Farvin. Oh my god, Big Clan are watching this and wondering why didn't we look at this guy earlier? This guy was always the star of Sprout and they don't find these initial entries so easily but Favin just there, trade after trade after trade <laughs> and then he recognized that he was in this 1v1 on the site. Valde doesn't get there in time. He can't help out his teammates so it's just these isolated duels where Favin just holds all the cards. He almost timings himself so many times over as well, peering away from angles just as he's aggressing. Man, that's a round that OG wouldn't have wanted to let slip through their fingers but courtesy yeah. Favin, Sprout, take the pistol so now it's the OG force buy and it's actually a dig down middle. Slack's brought to 2 HP. You think the old Deagle might have been able to finish off that job? Damage changed. Does it make a difference in long range drop offs? E I believe so. Okay. Well, Slax is then very happy in that case. <laughs> I think you'll find you'll do more 80 damage di dinks on Deegs. Oh no. Oh no. You're already scaring me off, Michael. I, I could never use a Deeg anyway. But regardless, I love how Falvin starts off, even if it is a. On the basis of necessity, Alexi B, meanwhile, gets aggressive. Slax just killed himself. Accidentally. He jumped in the pit and he realizes, I probably shouldn't have done that. That might not have been the best of calls. Alexi, though, has made the perfect call. Now moves in. It's 5v3 with only one of the kills being found by Alexi. Oh, my days. Not like this. Surely not after oh. a hero round. Ral's trying to recover the situation. Alexi's finally dealt with, so not contained over towards long. Black says, if you do it once, you can do it twice, Farvin. Come on, clutch it out for me. Let's go. Raza wants to be the one to get some spotlight on himself. Although a grenade down. Oh, that is juicy. Down to 8 HP, but Raza and Farvin still break onto the bomb side. Nico, one behind, good for one. Speaking up the ball, but Kress has shut them down. Now Raza is alive, a one on one. This time, Valde can salvage. He does have the bomb nearby as he dropped it earlier. And Raul speaking in just didn't have the HP, he couldn't win out that duel under any circumstances. I'm seeing some conflicting opinions about what I was bringing up with the Deeg. You know, 10 damage being dropped off, they haven't amplified the, the range the fall off, I don't think, here on the Deeg. But you can see that even, even with these upgraded pistols, uh, and the the investment here from Sprout, it was just enough pressure. Oh, you just imagine a world where where Slacks isn't burned by his own Molotov in pit. That extra player could have been a world of a difference for Sprout to to get something done. But uh, we've seen this this trend all throughout today, that oh, pistols are getting overturned. Another game where it has graced us. You know what? I won't I won't stand cemented on that <laughs> whole dig dink situation because. Everyone seems to think differently, but they, they cut 10 damage off the weapon, so do with that information as you will. Dust 2, one of the few maps where you can actually see all the damage fall off across yeah. these weapons as well. Seems like we're going to head into another technical timeout. I wouldn't be surprised to see Sprout 
actually for a spy into this. And honestly, I'd even prefer that maybe. The fact that Slacks ends up falling that early in, it's definitely unfortunate. And I and I start to wonder in situations like that, Michael, which is that, is that nerves? Is that, what like, what's going on over there? Because on one end, you've just had your player come through, get a quick ace to start things off. You've got to be feeling slightly good about that, unless you're already fighting, which is unlikely. <laughs> I hope so. Right now, though, it's Martin to meet the long push out. Cressy wanting to be able to get a quick one three. He's so wide. Oh my oh. god. Cressy's in the open. Flames will punish him, but that could have gone very well. Bold yeah, they're trying to get their hands back up to that Galil, and they, and they do recover it. So Farvin retrieving the rifle, all that damage being done onto OG as well. These site players aren't exactly healthy. So there's a little bit of fear, I think, being instilled into OG. You can see the, the reaction, as you often do. Lose control of long, take short instead. If you moved Montu out of that problematic position, just in case it is a long play, he's not going to be susceptible to being another entry added to the tally. Sprout now begin their slow approach up towards long. And there's not really players inside of the site here for OG, just maintaining control of Gandalf and Elevator. Flames does have an incendiary though, which could make it very difficult to get the bomb plant in or do too much about this. farvin has been boosted up. He's hoping to be able to find one. That's Flames gone. He's already been removed. Valde as well has an incendiary. Oh, molly. To get onto the bombs that will be nearly impossible. That's the second molly coming in. Slax needs to get on. Alexi's been dinked up and Alexi will be forced back into the smoke while the bomb's being planted. Ralph's good for one. Looks for more, but it's sneaker to punish. They're all so low except for Speedy who's been left behind inside the pit. Slax is down, the boost is good, Mantu's got two, and Speedy's got to do one more than that. We want to win this round out. Alexi bringing out the defuse, the bomb's not planted for him. I've got no idea what Speedy's doing over there. He's trying to pick him off, you know, just as they were crossing. It's not planted for him, so what can yeah. he really do, in all fairness? They were just getting completely molotov out of position, constantly over it at A ramp, and they just wanted to get that, that bomb down. Just slightly curious about why, you know, you wouldn't see the earlier push up trying to play off of those teammates at Goose, potentially. You know, but obviously, you have to be careful about the push up from CT ramp as well. All yeah, and like a long scenarios. flank as well as yeah. what his primary role would have been. Yeah, I think things just kind of broke down too quickly for Spitty to make the reaction. And hey, timings not quite there but Ralph is at least tagged down in the meanwhile sprout no longer able to force fight slax has been saving up for the awp all this time regardless so not the worst of things to be able to get the bomb plan down a couple of times over i don't like the deagle buys to be frank uh coming in this many times you might have some troubles with the utility later on but even so if you can get a couple of kills the ct signs always easier to punish Yeah, only will be on a three loss bonus, so mm. could still be missing out on some key pieces, but we'll see if that actually culminates into anything substantial. Of course, if a, if a bomb plant goes down for a sprout, it would make up for any sort of investments they made into this round. Alexi, aggro oh. solo, not landing the shots, and doesn't want to stick around. Very much a shaky hand over there, but... Well, just back off in the meanwhile. Repeaks out again. Alexi unable to really get any damage on. So information is all he's good for. But the flash is not going to be particularly well placed. The T's have managed to back off. That smoke, however, is one Alexi is hoping to work off of. He's hoping that someone pops in through it. Dodge it. He can dodge out the flash. Catch them out while their backs are turned. Speedy is gone. So much utility coming into her short oh. Cressy with a D straight to Monta's head and Slax has found another in the meanwhile. Flames has to come up big. His two players playing close range can duck out off his aim and they know it, but they just move right past. Flames can't connect. Valde is the one they're worried about. Eight seconds on the clock and Valde again with his MP9 that he's managed to keep in his pocket for so long. This comes up big again. Could have maybe even just stopped and waited for the player to cross over with how blind he was. And... It would have been no loss bonus for the plan. Yeah, that's like deja vu. Flame, uh, yeah. Valde just coming off of short with that, that SMG and just finding the perfect backstab. Exactly what you, you want in that situation. Actually, you know, if we're, we're looking at min-maxing, if he just pulled out the, the SMG again and, and committed to the reload, might have even found more money, but not a big deal. Another round here for OG and an investment from Sprout. AWPs are out. 
Well, they might have been missing out on one or two nades. This is still a very, very capable buy. They're going to get long control as well. OG not fighting tooth and nail for it. Oh, Speedy has to be careful. Solid timing for this, I believe. Yeah, he's managed to move fast. The flash is good, though. Mantu in the meanwhile, heavily tagged up. Peeks out, he's good for one, but slack straight through the car. No way he's getting that cover. Bavin's pushed up in the meanwhile, right next to the smoke he goes. And Valde is once again looking for a backstab. They're all concentrated into short. Flames is starting to move up. They've got the incendiaries for the bomb side yet again. And Valde this time is going to be flashed. He just runs through the molly. Backwards long. He's run through the molly. They're not going to be expecting him. He's got the timing for one. And the spec oh. is not too far off either. Pavan, a single point of HP. That oh, ace in the beginning was impressive. But this time, no. Not even a chance to get a single frag. Man, Valde is so unrelenting. He knows exactly what that Molotov means over towards Long because Sprout are still struggling to breach into the bomb site. So with that timing, he just runs straight through and there's no way they're expecting this. They have no idea that uh, Valde is going to be the madman that he is and immediately threaten that flank. Valde has been the, the cherry on top for so many of these rounds now for OG. Constantly pressuring behind even as Sprout do get themselves into the site. And now Spitty has been dropped almost immediately, peering down Suicide. That angle has become more CT favored as a result of the changes. Of course, when you only have pistols, even more so. Yeah. That's that's also something to keep in mind. You right. dare fight me <laughs> with an AWP? Oh, okay. That's why you're fighting me. Yeah, how dare you? I will. I am very much not used to the smoke being given over. That looks like such a different animation yeah like look cute little nade trade yeah Ooh, catch meanwhile flash down mid while they're just making sure no one is gonna be able to flank the flank master just to remind everyone the only round that Strat has had so far is the round where Falvin got an ace not just an ace an ace clutch where he's able to get three kills after he's all alone so Nothing so far shown, which is particularly replicable. Well, they clean up. Good for one, drops the bomb. Farben to trade, sure, but from the back comes in the flank, and it turns out, Michael, flanks and both work both ways. Cressy can get the kill, and that's nice, but unfortunately for him, his HP is gone, and with 30 seconds, his chances of winning the round not too far off either. Flash is dodged, and Alexi B can take him down. Things looking pretty comfortable now here for OG, dodging out on too much damage being done by those upgraded pistols. See, they're starting to cement a bit of economy for themselves. Sprout still, like you said, fumbling to get around outside of that one instance where Favin steps up to the plate. The rest of Sprout haven't been able to look as threatening. See that HE dropped in CT spawn? Something that can be recovered later on. Yeah, when Valde inevitably starts to find someone. <laughs> I think I think Nico was the one that dropped that nade. So if they do need to rotate back towards that A site, it could be a plant denier. We'll keep our eyes on it. I wonder if we'll start being able to... Nah, that would be too much louder. I was wondering if we could start seeing maybe nades being dropped on the radar as well, eventually. Yeah, I, I had thought about that as well, but I, I do agree. It might just clutter things yeah. a little too much. It's already hard enough when players are stacked on top of each other. True, absolutely. But right now, the players stacked in B are actually pushing forward. Ross is gone. Out of the server. Mantu getting aggressive with that AWP. Something that has fallen out of favor a little bit in the online stage. Becomes a little bit harder to get accomplished. But Alexi B, meanwhile, playing the position Flames was at earlier on. Hoping for a bit more success off of it. Oh, Flames, nade. though. Back of the bomb side, and that grenade is good. Second one, even better, but Farvin is the one who gets the kill for now. Valde spamming away, not to be met by Farvin yet, but Farvin's been very good with that damage. He's only got three HP, so revealing his position now is tantamount to death, but Farvin still gets another in the meanwhile. He's 10 and 5. Mantu. Wait. No. Oh no! Oh my god, he's got it! Jumps up straight to the head. Slax is gone. He's just better, Slax. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were never the primary. They lied to you. How do you challenge this? Is Mantu going to go for it again? Surely oh, not. He has to. He has to. Could be going for a boost, which would be significantly less satisfying. But at the same time, Valde. Top of the bomb. 
be able to get on top. He's dropped it again. And Cress is behind the smoke, so he can't do anything about it. Five seconds pushing through. Good for one, but not two. Every single time, Michael. Every time. Valde is put in a 1v1. He has delivered. The yeah, only he round just, he's failed has been the pistol. He just keeps bringing it, bringing it over the line here for OG. Oh, you could see it coming as well. The fact that players were close to that railing, Montu, staring at the wall. As soon as this gets close like this, I mean, Ooh. what do you do if you're slacks? It's just there's there's no chance to react. God, I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. That is just so inhuman. Hell, even inhumane. <laughs> Thing is, they probably didn't even need the boost. Funnily enough, like there, there's an M4 in elevator. They're planting again. But in the event that it wasn't in a, an exposed plant where the jump up would have been viable there for OG, there was a, another path into the site in case they wanted to try and force the denial of, of that plant. And poor Cressy was just completely blocked off by their own smoke as well. Yeah. Meanwhile, just nothing for him to do there. Maybe a spam, something like that. But with time running out, him revealing his position was also just so risky. Now Slacks. Hoping that he can find with a scout what could not be found with an op. Yeah, just getting any sort of consistency out of the Sprout players has been difficult at the moment. Other than Farvin, obviously. Right now, OG are doing a, a great job of, of reading where they need to be as well, rotation-wise. The extra nade sometimes dropped in towards CT spawn actually played a factor in that last round. Not to deny plants like I thought it was going to be, but as soon as they start to bury us off, shot, off of short, they just got bombarded. So now there's a bit of open ground here for Sprout to play around, especially with the half buy coming in. You can understand the more defensive approach from the CTs. Ooh. That's. A bit of information given over. Sprout with a few players making sound cues down towards mid and dropping the bomb as well onto the ground, but no one's nearby enough. I'd like to say Alexi isn't. To be able to have heard that. Oh, that nade. Ooh. OG's utility users has been very good. Be it incendiaries yeah. on the bomb side and ramp all grenades down on short. Sprout simply do not get onto A without already having lost half of their HP, if not more. Nico though, mid, he's done one spray chance to do. Slacks is gone next, and it's only one down mid that he's got to deal with. Doesn't even need the incendiary. Valde just takes him down speedy. Oh my god. That is a beautiful shot, but it's really just your swan song. Yeah, meanwhile, all his teammates are fighting in mid. Spinny got three <laughs> kills on, the, on that deagle. He, he picked apart the, the A side play, and he's probably thinking, wait, why on earth did we not just go A off the back of that? But... Too committed to the idea of running through mid and not being able to, to deal with the, the one man that stood in front of them. That's a, another solid showing here from OG. Now the A1S change has really seen full effect in the games we've watched today. Oh, they're not holding for it. They're knife out. They just didn't expect Spinny to run straight through, but they can't get any kills from it. Open opportunity for Sprout to find an entry and they still maintain control of long here for the CT side. One that claims over there to read the response. Oh. He's doubled up. He's doubled up. There's still incendiaries available. A smoke as well for flames. And he's just, oh my god, he's so aggressive over there towards the long doors as well. Mantu's just waiting here. There's no flashes. Nothing can force him off. So they know they can't go up into short. If they get on the back, the paranoia for Sprout is going to be yeah. at an all-time high. Just, just how? How? How are you always behind me? Valde, though, for once he is not going to be behind them unless they actually move on to the B platform and they're clearing out the car. Flames has gone from long to mid <laughs> to lower tunnels and he's right behind Sprout. Oh, this grenade is big as well yeah. at the same time. Timing is perfect. Flames knows. Flames knows. But Mantu will not let him reveal his position. Mantu just comes through, picks out two, and uh, makes, makes quick work of them. Very good defense coming out from Flames over on long, though. Put this into context, you know, we've been talking a lot about the, the utility usage from OG being on point. Alexi has six kills and 122 ADR. 
I mean, I'm looking over towards his utility damage, Michael, because I can do that. He's got... Michael, I want you to guess. It's nine rounds in. How much utility damage do you think this guy has? 420. 599. Okay. Well, you know, I went for the meme number, but not too yeah. far. <laughs> that is insane. And Flames is on 375, so... This is going to be some record high utility, but Valda, meanwhile... Oh my god. Sorry, I boys. keep getting Stabby, away with this. In the back it. It's just... You can't do anything, Michael. This is Valde. Yeah, it's probably just getting outmaneuvered on every aspect. The worst thing is he's playing on the B-bomb side. But then the rest of the rounds, he's just not... He's just in A short, in A long, wherever you don't expect him to be. Alexi B might have a chance to start buffing up that utility damage further very soon after they got short. However, the T side don't really have the smokes to be able to make that play, so long control is going to be the call for them instead. They're hoping that Slacks can use a distraction to catch off a player or two on the bomb site itself. Flames. Oh, bit of a bit sloppy on the spray, and Rawls is there to punish because of it. Flashes will also come through. Mantu's fully blinded out by that one. And he's been forced off the angle. Second flash not quite there. Alexi's found slacks, and Alexi, long range, is happy to get a bit more done. Grenade's gonna fly through. Won't do too much, but okay. any buff he's happy with. He just peeks out, takes on Farben as well. And OG find the ninth. I can't believe I was saying OG was most likely to be upset, Michael. Yeah, I think we had high hopes. You know, we've seen some, I think, some pretty solid games from Sprout through and through. But, you know, we, we've had this conversation throughout the day already about the the nervousness that comes with going from, from online to LAN. And OG seemed to be making that adaption quite well. I mean, at the moment, the reads are right on point. Sprout are... I mean, it feels like OG are in their heads. Or, or, and it, felt, it feels like it's been that way since maybe round four or five. A lot of T side boost action at the start of this one. Tried to get the pick down middle. Not to be. Neither the short play either. Mantu. Ooh, could get caught in transition. Flick won't hit the mark, but now Molly can be deployed to prevent Sprout from taking territory. These are the spots where OG have liked to pressure elsewhere, especially these extremities. But with Sprout playing things so slowly, again, it's understandable that, that OG aren't always putting themselves in those positions. Kind of alluding to it earlier, the paranoia that sets in if you're Sprout, even if you had just cleared those upper tunnels or the, the long doors, you know that there's always that possibility of a flank. Valda is just inched all the way through. He's already getting ready for another play, Michael. You know it in the back of your head, he's already getting ready. Good nade from Alexi B, but I do, do I even need to say that? It's just at a this constant. Point? It's just a nade from Alexi B. It's gonna be a good nade involved. It's gonna be a good shot. He's got one oh. right behind his team barrel as well. Cressy is finally able to take him down. And now Montu comes in, backstabs regardless of whether Valde oh shoots him in the front. Man. I mean, I knew OG was really good at backstabs, but I thought that was just NBK. Hey. <laughs> God, yeah, this 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 CT side just looks kind of infallible, especially if Alde's having a solid game. That always feels like it's, uh, sometimes the, the hit and miss component with, with OG. Uh, I think it's it's been delved into stats-wise previously for him. Like, he has good maps. Inferno is one of the most notable where he really overperforms versus his average. And... I mean, at the moment, it just doesn't seem like there's there's weak links to exploit. Like, e even Nico hasn't really felt like a weakness because he's not really been involved in the same way that the, the rest of the team has. Constantly just going for for these A pressure plays where, where Nico is, you know, kind of trading places back and forth, playing that anchor role. Uh, I mean, we're three timeouts through for Sprout, yeah. and they are still stuck on the one round that they got off of the Fav and Ace. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you go with this one. And we knew this was going to be an uphill climb. Like, Sprout were the underdogs. But to be taken out so effectively, like, 
OG are, are don't look th like there's been a couple of 1v1s perhaps, but it's always in, in, in these positions where OG feel like they, they have the jump in the 1v1. Like it's not as if it's a constant mind game between two players where it can just come down to who can clutch better. Right now, OG's map control is something that Sprout haven't been able to deter nor contest properly, even with the amount of space that they're gaining in middle. And that was some of the, the questions coming into the new change for Dust2. We thought it would emphasize the need for mid control, especially as, as a CT side, because you get more territory for free. Oh, Alex, he served them. You know what that means, Michael. If he had a grenade here, he would have chucked it out, but he dodges a flash, he's good for one, has the safety back off, there's a teammate to help, perhaps with the utility? No, not quite. Looked like maybe they would start to rotate back in, but with Alexis demise, the A-bomb side is actually the emptiest it's been ever for Sprout. Unfortunately for them, they don't realize it and can't really capitalize on it just yet. Hold up the timing here for Valde, because you know that he'll want to pressure again. And I love that OG have been stockpiling HG grenades in CT spawn. It feels like the perfect place for it, especially True. with Sprout constantly looking for short pressure. That's why they're getting bombarded as much as they are. And I'm looking at it, Michael. Alexi is up to 740 utility damage. That is how? That's it. like you're going to be breaking some records pretty soon. Flames comes in, speed is gone. And Valde, as he starts to creep forward, he's go again. down crash. He shuts him down. And oh. there's another one. Valde, it's deja vu, but hell, keep giving it to me. Because I love to see it. Well, I don't think there's any way to sugarcoat this. Sprout are getting spanked. Dust2 isn't exactly a terrible map for them either, so... Yeah, it's one of their best. Yeah. The fact that they're getting bullied by Big Dog's OG... Well, I guess that just goes to show the, the experience, the, the rapport these players have. It ain't all for nothing. Did they just lay down mid to get the peak? Yeah. Interesting. Just to guess make sure that they didn't get the peak themselves. Yeah, CG sides do get there faster, so... Yeah, but surprised to see the night, even so. Alexi, that's a molly... Oh, that's a grenade. Ah, that's a grenade and half, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna keep a check on him. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the stream. And he goes favor. back to the CG sponsor to pick up another HE. Yeah. <laughs> this is so insane. Actually, just madness. Now a flash comes in, and he doesn't need a grenade for this one. But a quick one doesn't really hurt. Except oh my for God. Speedy. Speedy's gone and out. Alexi now another flash comes through. Just wants to be there in case there's anyone else to find. Because why the hell not? How annoying must it be to play against Alexi? Oh my God. And this is actually just a key feature of, of the fact that grenades can be dropped because you don't need to, to bring your, your B-side anchors over to throw grenades to stop short pressure. You can just have those nades available to you. And so Alexi <laughs> is the nade man. This is the most convincing argument I've seen so far for the chain being broken. Oh, Father, he's been nestled away there for so long, but Valde just finds him in the back again. He and can't now, keep he getting away with just it. For slacks, but he's able to... Slacks rather is able to find him and take him down. Alexi, meanwhile, come on. Oh, come on. No, no. That's when they like... think they might have an edge. 1v3 now for Slacks on this B bomb sign. They're not waiting around. He's got himself the pass. Could it be more? No, Alexi will not let him reset that weapon. Not at all. AWB can be saved up as well if they want to go for the double, but yeah. I mean,. Oh god. I I, I just want to see. I just want to see. What is utility damage is going to be at the end of this, Michael? Michael, do you want to take a guess? Uh I think he's probably up to like 900. 924. Yeah. Have we ever had a 1000 utility I, damage game from anyone? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, especially on Dust 2? Yeah. Like not like Inferno or something. It was these like major choke points, but <laughs> With, with short being such a key point of the Sprout offense, they're just getting, they're getting blitzed. <laughs> it must be so annoying to play up against this. Like, what do you even do? Double flash out. Slacks has got long control. Maybe that's, maybe that's a solution, you know? Just kill them and long. Well, maybe a few signs of cracking. 
you know, sprout a bomb plant, which has there have been few this half. Yeah. Now they get an opening entry off the pick. Look mm -hmm. at this stack from OG. They're they they are not moving. I mean, they, oh my god, they <laughs> they've got all awesome. four players in at this A site, and with as many rounds as they have already accrued, I mean, hey, they're 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 willing to get a little weird with this. Alexi B, the nade man and the boosting man. The rest of the OG squad do take territory in at A, and Sprout have ground to a halt. Best opportunity they've had in so many rounds. They got the opening pick over at long. They have free territory, free reign in this spot. And little, little do they know that OG are just waiting for them to make their move. 40 seconds and they're gonna have to pull the trigger pretty soon. They don't have smokes to cross over effectively either. Nico in the meanwhile smokes himself off. Knows there's a duel to her short. He needs to be careful about but it's not taking yet. Alexi B, a Molotov over and oh. Nico is perfect with a spray transfer. Finds himself too and slacks it all alone. A grenade just for good measure oh, and no. a second to finish. Alexi even had a... Th he had another in his pocket. Michael, he had another in his pocket. Oh, I'm telling you, man, this is ridiculous. Go on, give me the update. What's he up to now? Yeah, it's not that much more. He just got okay, it because okay. because uh, Slacks was so low HP, it doesn't crack damage over the death. So he's only on 932. But then he was in the perfect spot for the Molotov to deny the plant on A as well. Uh, and then Nico just takes all the glory. I feel like Nico's actually made the argument like, hey, guys, you, you guys are having so much fun on this A site. Please <laughs> just tag me in, coach. <laughs> give me a shot. I'm telling you, I'm good for it. Well, he's getting ready to stab them in the back again. And as he's going to be looking to turn around on them, they've already managed to move into short. So Valde's timing's going to be Much crucial, quicker. as always. Flames up. He's so fantastic oh! here. Three quick kills with the M4 and the Flames. We'll do what Flames put in. Speedy peeks forward. He's good for a kill. But that's all he'll get. 14 for OG. And the second half only has one way to go. But we're going to go to a break before we go there.
Just to update everyone as we do go into the second half, Alexi B ended out the first one with a grand total of 967 utility damage. Ah, damn. 967. Michael, you, Mikasi on the microphone with me, did some statistical hunting. And Michael, you can tell what you found, even well, if it's not exclusive. You know, exclusive. You know I, this isn't exactly the, 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 the deepest dive, but, you know, pop up a little Reddit post. It's like, oh, yeah, Zivnix with, like, 952 utility damage in one map. This is 967 in one half. So, already seeing the applications of the change, and I imagine OG are going to want to close things out. This T side... Let's see if they've got any extra tricks. I don't think they're going to have to work too hard for it. Oh, Farmer's found himself at first. Could it be another pistol round victory for them coming in? They have to wait to see because he's moved far into the smoke. Wants to get some of that backstab action, but Speedy and Slax are the ones taking it away from him. Farman finds another and a clean round from Sprout. Some good stuff coming in. I That smoke gap looked like it was intentional, but it felt like it shouldn't have been. Yeah, they're just getting uh, destroyed as a result of that. The, the fact that he's able to get that first kill and then take Sanctuary in the B tunnels, which they just came out of, they they get nothing accomplished. OG unanticipating of, of that particular move. And you know, two pistols. One here for Sprout in this map. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> the only two rounds they've got it are the... Yeah. Oh my god. Pressy, though. No. Oh, that's it. him and Speedy starting off very strong. Just everyone's been mowed down. Valde oh. is actually the one to come through with two return kills with the Glock, no less. And uh, Farmer's now to be recovered. Now, look, man, Valde's had a wild ride so far. 20 kills on him. Really would have been dominating the conversation if not for Alexi B being just some sort of a assembly line of HE grenades. Valde, though. He's not quite embraced the Industrial Revolution. He does things the old-fashioned way. With his own tools. With his own hands and a gun. Well, that gun wasn't his to begin with, so Favin makes sure that it falls into proper ownership. Things are falling too far away here from Sprout at the start of this one. You know, they didn't lose that second round, which was a big reason as to why they started en ending up on, on the back foot. You know, they, we could have seen them getting a few more easier rounds together. Had they been able to hit the conversion in the first half. Yeah, OG have been kind of untouchable this map. So let's see if we get that resurgence from Sprout in time. Maybe they've been doing a little CT site explorations in their own right. Maybe they're sick and tired of Alexi's nonsense. Yeah. <clears throat> but here's the thing. When you, when you create and you understand how strong one particular strategy is, on your CT side, you're you less likely to fall it. victim to it on your T yeah. side. That, that's always one of the things which you sit down and go like, how do we counter this in case it comes out again? So especially yeah. in top tier play, because it's going to, you know, it, it literally takes, they've used it this game, I can guarantee it, tomorrow everyone's gonna have it. Because it's not, you know, super complicated, depending on a lot of different protocols and whatnot. The timing of the grenades are skilled. Yes, I'm not gonna take that away, but other than that, it's just dropping five nades and, and focusing on short, isn't it? Diddy for now, though. Flash out in middle. Alexi wanted to quickly take the duel out. Speedy, though, he's gonna go by the wayside. Will not be happy about this, and Alexi keeps the player on the corner, force back as well. Well, they will be able to jump up onto short. Ral's not exactly spotting that action. And Sprout don't have a CT player to deploy some of that counter utility that has seen so much strength. Slacks still here with a scout. Molly will be a little bit delayed. There's already Flamesy closing in on that distance, and Slacks didn't quite realize fast enough, but Ooh. the adjustment's there. Headshot hit, and Alexi's finding the, fi the firepower to build it, and Cressy as well coming in to alleviate Ooh. that stress, but there's Valde and Mantu coming in, doubling up, and now this A-bomb site firmly in OG control. Rawls and Farben, the two hot prospects who we really hyped up going into this. Farben's lived up to the expectation. Rawls, maybe not as much. But now in the 2v3, they need it, but it won't be delivered. Farben, good for one, a oh. for the second as well. Possibilities have been opened up now. He's got some utility as well. A flashbang or two to work with, but Mantu's repositioning after throwing that flash. So Farben might not expect it. And Mantu, he's going to cash him off. Farben peeks back out, but Mantu just shuts him down. That flashbang throw, that was tactical. That's great stuff. 
Leads 5 to believe that Mont is going to be on the bomb side itself, but he's already worked back to short. Yeah, his teammates relay that information perfectly, and then he could just reposition. Like you said, it's such a hard spot to be in as Farvin. So many different angles you need to clear as you're entering that site once again. And now OG on match point. This Dust2 has been rather educational, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. First thing you learn, don't pick Dust2 against OG. <laughs> Slacks hero AWP and he will miss out on his opening opportunity. Not wanting to give this one up too easily. He doesn't have armor, so spam that SMG around the corner could be dangerous stuff. Spicer is just in for the hand smoke as well, but oh. Charles is the one to get the kill. Flames is gone. And Cressy. Close range angle, Flash has been dodged, but he doesn't quite get it in the wide swing. He started shooting a bit too early, and the mobility is what takes away his accuracy. Slacks now being brought down, but it's Ralts actually who comes in to defend. Slacks has been given a longer lease on life, but still. Mantu and Alexi V alive, waiting for the peaks to come through. Alexi has gone, Mantu all alone. Find Slacks now in a 1v2, bomb in the open. The CTs know they need to defend it, a Flash would be... Nice if it catches anyone out, but the CTs aren't really looking to peek into him either. On the bright side, Farben can't recover any rifles. But beyond that, they are doubling up. This is such good positioning coming out for them. Speedy just shuts him down. Great double peek from the two players. Sprout are able to get a fourth. Yeah, I didn't want to wait around to see if, if Mantu could reposition or potentially find these isolated fights, so they just kept on moving in for that extra information because, like you said, they wanted to get rifles into their hands and preventing some of those opportunities there for Mantu in the clutch had he given up that long control. So great reaction there from Sprout to keep themselves in it. That was, of course, uh, whatever you Ooh. could afford by. And Slacks has got the opening pick. They went for the deep peak down suicide and will be punished for it. Exactly, a big investment here from OG, so not a, not the highest impact round to find a kill like it. Oh, Volley coming in from behind. He's able to find Rawls, and Slax does trade. Good for it. With a Molotov, he'll even be able to secure his retreat. Speedy, meanwhile, though, he's got the Shadow Monsters going his way, and as Valde peeks in, he still gets a duel. What in the world? Valde's just unreal. What's he been eating, man? Yeah. Just going into his 25 and 10, another opportunity given to him as Farvan dry peeks out, but Valde finally misses a shot, and even that's just to the body. Rotten's under control, and with Nico having a Glock, yeah, this is just a done deal. Even so, looked very scary when you saw Farvan peeking in dry like that. Yeah, especially because Vale was primed on the angle. If if that's another kill that goes their way, the, the round kind of breaks down from there because the, the short pressure was mounting there for OG, even without a heavy investment. Which is why they can afford to go for the full buy coming into this round. It feels like uh, it's just that it's a waiting game, really, for OG. One big capitalization on multi-frags is all it will take. And look at the speed over towards long. They are fully flashed as a result of the counter utility in from Sprout. They give up this territory, but they recognize that this was going to be a priority here for OG and didn't want to get caught in the crossfire. A lot of presence being revealed, and it seems like the response from Sprout is to just peer down towards the lower tunnels the problem is they don't feel comfortable getting aggressive themselves so you can't really see them getting the same sort of plays that valde was able to again and again it's just such a big risk when yeah you're staring down the barrel 15 5. at the same time without taking a risk are you really gonna even have a chance in it yeah oh molotov oh, that was over beautiful. at long that's Stops really the smoke. nice yeah that looked like it was intentional for sure Three smokes coming up. Mantu with a flash overhead as well to help them out. But Cressy with that grenade. Slacks as well. Oh, the Cressy with the incendiary. Slacks with the grenade. And Rolls with the shots. It seems like this will not be an easy ascent onto A. Now it's three on five. Mantu's got the incendiary needed to force out the player and canned up. But a grenade to the back of it as well won't be helpful. Flashbang from Slacks. 
and no one's bearing out into it. The T's are content with defending. Slax is trying to get the oh. trade, but Nico just shuts him down immediately. The headshot angle always hard to deal with as an all. Oh, no. All they find another. Back to a 3v3. Rawls is good through the smoke and Speedy gets another. But this is where Mantu is in the perfect position to catch off both, but the double swing is too much. Rawls just walks into him, shuts him down, and they've got the kits necessary. Yeah, Rawls has been a big, big factor. Now that they're on the CT side, he's rotated in at the right times. Has been, uh, again, uh, another pressure point where if they even attempt to try and get into this A site, Rawls is usually picking off one of these players. This time, it's it's through a smoke, so it's, it's a bit of a saving grace. But just by creating that extra room where the smoke over at long wasn't enough that, that OG could have another effective, effectively safe post plant to defend that bomb site meant that Riles and his teammate could just double up so easily like that. CG side looking more comfortable, certainly, for Sprout, but just such a big hole to dig themselves out of. And rounds like these are very threatening. How would you know they've got space as well? for another three, maybe four rounds that you start worrying. I think Bombsite's going to feel a little lonely this game. I mean, Sprout yeah. weren't exactly big advocates for it. The OG strange... aren't exactly focusing on it either. The strange thing for Sprout, though, is also the fact that they were so heavily, like, naded into short and they were still not going for B. Yep. I get that it's hard to take, but honestly, with uh, with how things are going, unless you get long, it just seems impossible and short as well. But Slacks over here, not quite able to pluck out the player moving on to the bomb side. They've got a free plant out of this. Maybe that shouldn't have been permitted. Four v five, no utility here for OG, but they are got flashes of plenty here on the side of Sprout, trying to scale up alongside it. This numbers advantage could be absolutely everything. And Nico, it'll be a one for one trade. Spitty and Cressy do collapse on this bomb site, so it's only Valde one on four with this bomb planted. And as good as he's been from short many times over, something tells me this might be a too tall an order. A smoke as well now in the way. Yeah, Sprout have got this. Slacks as well. This traces him through, shoots him down. Seven secured for Sprout, so they're making it respectable at the very least. But with the bomb plant, OG's got one hell of a buy coming in. I, I would imagine you can't really do the dropping grenades things into T spawn as well, in all fairness. It feels like unless you plan on retrieving them very quickly, T spawn is much more commonly liberated by the CTs. Yeah. So that's also an interesting dynamic to keep in mind. You, you have to plan around your drop names a lot more Ooh. specifically. Speedy has been tagged up. Yeah, the biggest one that, that I could see from T-Sides was that long pick scenario that I've, I've talked about a couple of times. Where if you have the good spawn, you know, drop your nades and even if things do go wrong. Hey, but Michael, extra what, about, what about 10 flashes over B? Yeah, let's uh, let's not end up in that scenario. You can see Sprout oh. using HEs are plenty on their CT side as well. Nico, Nico though. Oh. oh no! He's been so good on those spray transfers and continuations, Michael. M4, AK, he's done it all, and this is the worst time for Sprout to fall. This could have been it. This could have been the gun run that they needed to get themselves up to double digits, find themselves a bit more hope. But hope is what kills you. And I don't know if Sprout had any at all. 16 to 7, an incredibly dominant CT 